Today we're talking to Winter Valkyrie. Yep, hello. <laughs> I always forget the why. <laughs> I don't know why that happens, but... Uh, it's it's the way it's pronounced, you know. It's just like Valkyrie. Probably. You know, if if you pronounce it correctly, Valkyrie. There you go. You can actually know there's a Y in there, but it's probably yeah. It's probably how I pronounce it because it's like oh, I'm doing it based off the female warriors from Norse mythology, and yet I pronounce it like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But hey, either way, it's awesome. It's cool. It's um, it's great to have you here, and I'm glad you got to be able to take some time away and. And do the interview. Yeah, no problem. Yep. So let's dive right into it. How did you discover cosplay? Funny story there, actually. I actually was cosplaying before I even knew the word. And it all started with my grandmother making me a Sailor Mars costume from scratch for Halloween one year. And... Pretty much from there, for Halloween, I've just been doing a few outfits myself. And then in high school, I joined the Japan Club, where I learned from a friend of mine the term cosplay. Mm. And I was like, oh, what's that? And she was just like, oh, pretty much it's Halloween every day. Pretty much, yeah. Nice. So and what... I was just like, oh, cool. Yeah, so what was your first cosplay then? Well, the same... Uh, other people wise, it'd be the Sailor Mars, mm -hmm. but convention wise, it was Doctor Strange, specifically the one from Ultimate Spider Man, the cartoon. Oh, nice. Very nice. So, and that was before they made the movie. Oh, that was before the movie, of course. So, what are your three next cosplay plans? Well, the big one is one that everyone is requesting me to do, which is Toko from Danganronpa. And mm. I'm also adding in Valoria from Fire Emblem and um, a secret cosplay that I'm choosing to not reveal to anyone as a little challenge to say, like, hey, do, hey, try to find me. Because pretty much all I can say is I'll be pretty much concealed everywhere, including my face. Nice. Nice. Very nice. So, what are you cosplaying as right now? Uh, currently, I re I'm representing a series called Escape the Night, and I really fell in love with the character of MatPat even before the show. So, currently, I am MatPat the Detective from Escape the Night Season 3, right. which is also one of my favorites. So, have you ever been in a cosplay contest? Plenty. And I've never won, unfortunately. One day you will. One day you will. One day. I think it's because I'm not in the same level as a lot of the other cosplayers, which is why I'm not as often up for grabs to win something. Yeah. And a couple of times I a couple of times I wasn't allowed because the same time I was working the masquerade doing the uh, masquerade, I was also volunteering at the convention and it was all yeah, since you're staff, you're not allowed to give one of these awards. You're like lame. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. No, I've um, personally been in one masquerade so far, and I've noticed that even in the novice category, there there are phenomenal cosplays. And I'm like, Geez, yes, this is supposed to be novice. Yes, seen... <laughs> so many. I've seen so many that are so good, and I'm just like, I'm not worthy. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's. Depending on you know your skill level and depending on your cosplay, it's you know there's some people who are using a cosplay that should be belonging in the journeyman category. Yeah, and they're, exactly. They're novice, it, and it's all about the judges, really. If the judges go, no, nope, yeah. you're not going novice. You're going journeyman. You're you know, and they they could decide from there. Yeah, I mean, I even thought one judge would be biased a bit because she was dressed as Sailor Mini Moon in one oh. masquerade, and I was dressed as Helios from Sailor Moon. Yep, <laughs> yep. So that that could have been a biased situation. <laughs> no, yeah. no. So, do you prefer sewing, armor making, or wig working? 
Oh, God. I guess, if anything, since I have no experience in armor and I still need to practice on sewing, for now I'll say the wig making. Because yep. I'm, I've got a little bit of experience in that area, even nice. when I put together a couple of wigs myself for the first time. Yeah, for me, I came and sew, armor make, or wig work. My my wife does all that. She's she's. <laughs> a, I, I was like, nope, I can't do that. I I, I'm surprised on how many people can actually do that. Who can actually. Like, yeah, put exactly. the effort into that and make creations that are amazing. Like, you know, the wife made this Ex dress back here. Oh, know, wow, that looks completely amazing. Completely from and, scratch. Yeah. No no pattern. Yeah, and I, I know a, a friend of mine, and she's with Arizona Autobots, and she made a full um, RC from scratch, which is what she'll be doing next. <laughs> wow. So, uh, do you prefer to do, when you when you go out and do photo shoots, do you like to go on location, or do you like the green screen effect? Uh, I'd say from being part of a few group shots and doing some individual photography myself, I like being more on the location because it puts in like better scenery and that that kind of thing. And we do like crazy extra effects as well, like uh, if it's falling leaves that you want to have around you. You can literally just throw the leaves in the air on location and have a photo going on that way with all the leaves falling around. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, in Arizona, it gets really hot, right? Ugh. You know? Yes. And so what are, what are some of the downfalls of um, going on location in cosplay? Well, for one thing, well, for one thing, temperature. <laughs> I mean, I literally was dressed in, like, a double-layered costume one time, and mm -hmm. I wanted to just go to this freaking Yu-Gi-Oh group because one of, someone I know was going to be there, and I wasn't even dressed in one of my Yu-Gi-Oh outfits oh. for it. And I was literally just sweating to, sweating to death, and then after, but then I have, was like, oh, crap, I'm in the masquerade in this costume, too, and I'm going to be covered in sweat. You'd be like... <laughs> No, I think with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, like the sweat would probably make the cosplay even better. <laughs> well, well, yeah, sweating. especially if you're dressed as like Merrick or something. Yeah, you're always sweating. Yeah. Uh, so, is there a type of character that you cosplay frequently? Oh gosh. Um. Well, if I had to pick something frequently, um. It's more anything themed around MatPat, because mm -hmm. I could be the detective at one event. I could be the Mirror's Edge version from his Game Lab series at another event. Nice. And I could be the Society Against Evil version from Season 4 of Escape the Night at another event. Yeah, so you or have a lot of dark options. You have a lot of options available to you. Or be the evil version oh, the <laughs> that evil fans version. put together. Nice. Yeah, it's it's always fun to cosplay. However, in a time of pandemic, how are you coping? The cons are all shut down. They just announced the Savagen Con is now officially yeah, I know. shut down. And so you're like, ugh, when is it going to open? So what are you I doing? Know. Well, well, I mean, outside of just doing my best around the house it gives me more time to set up more plans to like what do i feel like doing mm -hmm. and i'm getting some more inspiration from some games i would play on my phone a few times and yeah. studying up on a few areas to figure mm -hmm. out some ideas too it's more the matter of making sure i can uh have the money enough to put stuff together that's that, always the big problem that's always a big problem with everyone is the the money factor yes exactly so you know i've always heard the older you get the better cosplayer you become because you have more money <laughs> <laughs> no i think that's i don't know who like that but that is uh not me even though i do save a lot <laughs> it's not true i think if you're young and you're living with your parents then you <laughs> and then you have the more money <laughs> yeah yeah, true. Yeah. 
So, uh, what's the most detailed cosplay you've done? Oh, God. Um, I would say if I had to pick one, it would be um, Cure Chocolate from Kira Kira Print Cure a la Mode. Okay. That one just required a lot of different elements to put together. I had to put brown effects on my jacket. I had to add tan effects to my boot covers and put a lot of white stuff on the boot covers, too. <laughs> wow. Get a, my hat ready to go. Mm-hmm. So, and not to mention get the dog ears and dog tail to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> to because, put everything together. You know, it's uh, quite complicated to make dog ears and dog tails. Well, I don't. I didn't make them. I bought them. But the rest of the outfit, it was like, okay, I got to do this part and this part. Mm-hmm. I got to spray this cape to make it the right color. I got, yeah. I got to cut a little scarf to make the centerpiece for my... For where my neck is. <laughs> yeah, true. So, do you have any favorite cosplayers? Well, off the bat, I can think of uh, Melinda Chan and X Shadow because they were the duo that got me started into uh, doing specifically Yu Gi Oh cosplays. Hmm. And then add on to that, um, Heartless Aquarius is a, ve- a regular I've seen. Um, I fought, I like Twin Pools and Nova Vanderwolf as, and their outfits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's kind of like just a different list of them. And I'm friends with another one called Fifty Shades of Blue Eyes. And oh, nice. he's this epic Kaiba cosplayer. <laughs> nice. So do you have any top three cosplaying tips like uh, craftsmanship like when you're crafting things well since I'm not in the same level as a lot of others um, I would say probably crafts wise uh, just try to get close to accuracy as you can Uh, there's a lot of stuff available to get on a budget so try to budget wisely to put things together and if you really wanted to get something quickly then thrift shops are definitely your friends (laughs) because I was able to luckily find a lot of my outfits thanks to, like, Goodwill and Walmart. Yep. Yeah, exactly. There's lots of panels uh, during cons where it's uh, cosplay on a budget. Yeah, and everything. yeah, I know of those where it's like, okay, th- you can attend this to know, hey, you're tight on money. This is what. Yeah, this is the places is you option. go. Speaking of places yeah. to go, what are your favorite places to go to get materials? Well, for one, Walmart, because I definitely get a lot of luck when I've uh, gone to Walmart for a lot of things. Nice. Like the whole uh, glasses cover thing, found that in the glasses stand. Uh, I got a ribbon for a different outfit that I found at Walmart. In fact, I have a few ribbons in there <laughs> from Walmart. And then nice. pretty much Goodwill is just magic, because I've been luck- really, really lucky in there, including finding a dress that was super accurate to another character I was doing one time. Nice. And I guess if needed, like if you can't, if you're struggling to find like a tie specifically, I've gone to a place called Tie One On, and it's pretty much just all ties, bow ties, neckties, that kind of thing to help me out a little bit. Yeah, I remember when I tried to do uh, an adult Todoroki cosplay, I couldn't find a red tie to save my life. Ah. I was like, where is well, the red tie? One... tie? Just red. Don't worry, tie. Go to, like, tie one on. You got ties galore over there. <laughs> yeah, I tried to go to Goodwill for it, the tie, and it's, like, no red tie oh, at all. No, no. I was that's like, a bit Gah. harder. I mean, I had to go. But I, I, I was trying to find this one in particular there, but mm-hmm. it didn't have the one I wanted and the color I needed. Yeah, exactly. So um, what is your favorite cosplay you've done? Like One of your favorites. Oh, man. Um... If I had to name one, uh, this is from a more obscure show called The Fourth Door, but I've fallen deeply in love with the bad guy, Rafe, Mm -hmm. and pretty much he's just got like this cool all-white outfit look to him that really also helps out in heat, even though it also could be easily easily dirty, but I just love like emulating the character, getting in the character, and usually I'm not a, a fan of bad guys, and yet somehow right when I met Rafe, he was just like... Oh gosh, he's so misunderstood. I don't. I respect him. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so 
What is your horror story of cosplay? The Great Phoenix Fan Fusion Evacuation of 2018. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were there, huh? Literally. Yes, I was, I was participating in the masquerade that year, too, as wow. a character named D.F. Woodrow. And it was just a mess of things because it was like I left my phone in the green room. We were rushing out so quickly. The boots wow. I wore hurt my feet like hell. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, we boots were always hurt. Sweltering in, sweltering in the heat for so long. But, I mean, at least I hung out with some people I made friends with uh, that were also contestants in the show, too. Yep. For those uh, listening who don't know the great evacuation of 2018 of phoenix fan fusion uh a man decided to bring a gun to fan fusion in 2018 and uh wanted to shoot an actress right is that what he was the goal it was jason david it was for jason david frank yes and it was apparently that he attacked jason david frank some time ago and he was coming to finish the job and jason himself said i don't know this guy as you can see i'm not wounded and I don't know yeah. what's with him. He's like he's and the a fire little... alarm went off. Yeah, and then the yeah. fire alarm and went off. And the fire off. alarm went off on, went off on top of that, which kicked everyone out of the first place, damaging yeah. cosplays and forgetting stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was it was not a fun time. Uh, so, what was the funniest cosplay story? I would go with. Um, I don't remember the year, but it was during a panel run by some friends of mine called the Danganronpa Despair-Inducing Debate. Okay. And we basically went into all these different topics, and I participated in this one topic as Kyoko Kirigiri. Okay. Enough to explain who's the better ultimate detective. And they made it more funny because by the end of it, um, all the losers of the debates had to come back on the front and pretty much dance to help out of themselves nice. or in other words dance until you're dead mm-hmm. to go in danganronpa theme nice and i also hate it because i literally was like frick um i'm wearing these boots and i am not wear, and i forgot to take them off so i'm now dancing in these heels that i could easily trip over wow <laughs> brave <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what is the best in-character interaction that you've had with someone? Um, I've had a few, really. But if I had to name one, it was Taiyokan one year. Mm-hmm. And I was dressed up as Eclipse Aquarius for day one. And I had this interaction where this one person was walking around and saw me in line literally getting food and was going... Oh, it's Aquarius. And then she looked closer and saw my outfit and went, oh, it's the chippy version. Oh, wow. And then because um, that Eclipse Aquarius carries this jar on her shoulder a lot, Mm -hmm. I didn't have it with me that year. So she then was asking me, oh, where's your jar? And I pretty much just put on this little kid voice because Eclipse Aquarius was just a playful child who just wanted to have some fun. And I went, Leo told me not to bring it. (laughs) <laughs> just nice. acting sad about it nice. and I guess if I had to name a second one um, I was Starscream one year a human version of Starscream mm-hmm. and in that one someone mistook me for Megatron and I literally oh, went wow. right into character and I went right into character because Starscream hates Megatron's guts mm-hmm. and I literally just went how dare you compare me to him I hate that guy <laughs> and I just want him dead <laughs> nice Nice. Yeah, the great thing about cosplay is uh, it has an acting element to it sometimes when you when you have interactions oh, yeah. with people, and it's fun. Um, of course, the whole um, debate whether um, you know just because you're in cosplay doesn't mean you give consent. You know, too too know. often you see you see people coming up to cosplayers, giving them hugs. Well. If it's a three-year-old yeah. child, okay, whatever. Come up here. It's okay. Yeah, that's fine. You know, but when it's like a 20-year-old, 30-year-old man coming up to you, and you're like, okay, dude, whoa. <laughs> yeah, Just because I'm dressed yeah. like this does not give you the authority to come up to me and, you know, berate. Yeah, exactly. You know, and have you ever had that situation before? 
actually, I have not because I'm more con- I'm more concealed cosplayer. I don't okay. reveal too much skin when I dress up in outfits. Mm-hmm. So I've never really drawn that kind of attention. Okay. So yeah, and you you mentioned you've been mistaken as a different character before. Has that a lot and has that happened often? Three times. Three times. The Megatron was one of them. Uh, another time I was dressed up in a creation of my own, which, which was related to Escape the Night. And someone thought I was dressed up as Maki from Danganronpa V3. And then a third time um, was when I was Helios. Uh, that year I did not have my horn to go with the character. But it turns out there's an anime called Yona of the Dawn. Yeah. And one of the characters in it, the white dragon, is pretty much dressed about the same as Helios. And okay. so, since I was with a friend of mine who was dressed up as the yellow dragon from Yona of the Dawn, they thought of the white one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it makes yeah. sense that like a lot of times people mistake people for a different character, especially when it's the anime sector. Uh, anime, oh, yeah. it's Oftentimes, you could be mistaken as a different character, and you're like, oh, you're where from? Because, like, you know... What are you from? <laughs> yeah, the Black Swordsman versus Kirito, you know, and, you know, or, or Persona 5. You know, they all yeah. they all look similar. And so it's just like a lot of people get those mistaken a lot. So have you ever cosplayed with a family member? I have cosplayed with my sister a few times. Uh, but we've never dressed up as the same thing. I would dress up as my own things, and then she would dress up as something different. So, but we have um, cosplayed together a few times. There was only one time we dressed up from the, as two people from the same thing, but it wasn't even a convention. It was Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Yep. As, as they say, you are never too old for Halloween. Free candy is exactly. free candy. Free candy is free candy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, every time... Trick or treaters come up to our door. It was like, "Oh, hey, you're 20 years old, but you're in costume, so here you go." <laughs> Have a candy anyway. <laughs> Have a candy anyway. I don't care. I go trick or treating with my kid all the time because, you know, she's 16 now, so I don't know if she's gonna go this year or not. But um, yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, I just pass out the candy now. <laughs> yeah. Recently. Yeah. So I always go out with them, and they're like, "Why do you go? Just go. I always got to go with us." I'm like, "Hey, it's free candy." Free can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, what is the favorite, what is your favorite cosplay photo of yourself? Oh, gosh. Um, if I had to say that, it would probably be me when I was dressed up as um, Evelyn Marthane, who's a paladin from Dungeons & Dragons Scream uh, Dice Camp. It was one of the first times I've worked with, like, go there. And then I had a little photo shoot thing with a friend of mine, and I just love how the whole thing turned out in result. Okay. Nice. So, have, um, what are your go-to stores? You said Walmart, Goodwill... Yeah, um, small wa- Walmart and Goodwill are obviously the big ones. Um, Target, even though it's more expensive, I've also had some luck over in Target to find some items. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes Party City and a Halloween costume shop called Fun Costumes. Yep. I've gotten a few things. I've been around there a few times, mainly to get like hairspray nice. and that kind of thing, because it was before I decided because I never dyed my hair. And I, when I've done characters of different hair colors, I was like, I don't want to wear a wig, so how do I do this? And then I would buy, like, all these hairspray cans. Nice. And so you would style your own hair. Nice. Sometimes, yeah. That's cool. So do you prefer to buy pre-styled wigs or style them on your own? Oh, God, pre-styled. Definitely pre-styled. I do that a lot more anyway. There making it by myself is a bit harder like literally um i the one wig i made little, took way too much water to wet it properly and cut it the right way yeah to pull it out right no it's it's hard when you're styling wigs and everything like that it's 
because exactly. it takes so much time and so much talent and it's just like, okay, wait, what am I doing? It's it's like when I see exactly. the all, when I see the All Might wigs, like what? Oh my gosh! What yes. did you use? <laughs> what did you use to make those things stand up? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, what are all the cosplays you've done? <laughs> I've done too many. <laughs> too many to count. What's the number? What's the number of? Cosplays? Oh gosh, I would say let's see if if I've been doing it since. The Sailor Mars, I would say maybe about twenty to twenty-five. Yeah. Until maybe a little, maybe thirty. Do you <laughs> still have uh, all the cosplays in your closet, or are they like taken apart and used for other cosplays? Uh, some are still in my closet together, <laughs> but I've replenished a few of them for other outfits. Like I have a jacket in there that I use for like three different outfits now. <laughs> nice. No, it's good. It, you know, repurposing is is a best thing to do in cosplay, yeah. especially when you when you have a budget. So exactly. Um, when you do go to cons, do you like to go solo or do you like to go as a group? Uh, I mainly go my, by myself, mostly because I don't live in the same area as the others that would attend the convention that I know. Yeah. So. I do prefer going by myself because then I meet with them there and oh. then we could just like hang out right on location. Be all like, hey, how's it going? What are you doing? Oh, I want to go to this panel. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So have you ever cosplayed as a group like, you know, Sailor Moon Girls or or like, you know, My Hero Academia um, characters? Uh, or do you just meet up twice? for photo shoots? Uh, it was only twice and it was for Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, one year um, I was Kaiba, and the other year I was Pegasus, and we pretty much were just getting together that way. Because it was like me, a friend dressed up as Merrick, another dressed up as Bakura, mm -hmm. nice. one dressed up as Taya. Nice. So, what's the biggest con that you've been to? Convention? Fan Fusion. Fan Fusion? Yep. Fan Fusion, that's the big one. So I, I think that is the biggest in Arizona right now. You know, because yeah, pretty have, much. They have Tucson Comic Con, but that's not as big as Fan Fusion, I think. And then they have like Saboten, Tayo, Game On. Yeah, all all, that's all in Phoenix, yeah. Have you ever been up Well, not Tayo. Tayo, not Tayo. Tayo Con is in Mesa. Tayo's in Mesa. Yeah. Have you ever ventured up north to Flagstaff Con? I wish, but no. <laughs> yeah, it's... uh. There's lots of conventions in Arizona, and sadly, they're uh, all yeah. <laughs> canceled. They're all canceled. I guess I know. the good thing is we're saving money for our cosplays, but the bad thing is we don't and get people... to show them off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. At least everyone gets to like improve outfits or make new ones. Yeah, exactly. So uh, do you prefer to buy or make your cosplays? You mentioned that you're learning how to sew and learning all the armor-making so do you buy yeah, pieces I'm, of, you know, the cosplay? I mainly buy, yeah. Like, first I would go in my closet, see, like, what do I have in there that I can work with? And then I figure out what parts that are in there I already have. And then I say, okay, what do I still need? Then I make a list of what I still need, and then I buy those parts. Nice. Very nice. So what's the ultimate dream cosplay to do? Oh, my gosh. Um... I really want to touch base more in the direction of some classics. I really, I grew up loving Bakugan, and mm -hmm. I have a whole Bakugan collection, and I really want to do specifically Fabia from Gundalian Invaders, because okay. I just love how badass she is, and she and her partner are, like, crazy awesome. So that's, that's the, you know, an idea in the works. So if you could tell your past self anything about cosplay or anything for the the first time cosplayer, what would it be? Start easy, research what you want to do first before you dive into the whole cosplay pool so that you don't like get over your head. Yeah. It's it's a 
I've seen cosplayers tell me, uh, I've heard cosplayers tell me stories of where they were literally crying because they couldn't do something on their cosplay. Oh, that happened to me once. Because they, stretched, and it was they stretched their ability too far. Yeah, mine was because I grew out of the outfit. And then oh. when I tried to wear it, it the whole thing just broke on me. And I just suddenly was bursting into tears and... Yeah. My mother was just like, are you okay? You're like, no. And then it was just like, no. You know, I, I think uh, I was talking to Gus Matos about it, and uh, he said uh, he couldn't fit into his Captain America suit. And oh. uh, he's like, I've, got, I've gained my quarantine 30s. <laughs> no. Yeah. It was like where quarantine time, unfortunately for cosplayers, it's also... A time where we're getting bigger because <laughs> we're staying at I home know. and we're not doing anything. We're stuck anything. in our houses. We can't Gyms go are closed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's all about how you know you feel in the outfit, though. That's the great thing about yeah. Arizona cosplay is that the whole body positivity is a big thing here in Arizona. Yeah. It's like yeah, sure, sure. Let's not get it wrong that, like, you get more attention the more you look like the character. Yeah. But, hey, if you're rocking it, like, Hagrid, uh, Hagrid, Hagrid cosplay, you know him? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. no, not that one. No? He's, uh, he does the, the warrior. W Wario. Wario. Yeah, that's it. Wario. Wario, yeah. He does Wario, and he's like, mm, mm. and he's like, huge nice. guy. And it's like funny, and he he'll put on a Sailor Moon outfit and do that, and he doesn't <laughs> care. He's like, "Hey, I'm a big guy. I don't care. I'm gonna have fun." You know? Yeah, and, I'm and that that's what I get from a lot of uh, cosplayers is the fun factor. Now, however, there's always the drama that comes with cosplay. Have you ever witnessed yeah. that? No, but. Mainly because I've either never seen it or one time I luckily avoided it happening because I couldn't get off duty. <laughs> oh. I, but I felt bad because but I felt bad because literally the reason behind the drama, the victim of it was a friend of mine. Oh. And the way that she and her the way and she and her girlfriend were dressed. And I just felt so horrible because I was like first I was like, Oh crap, I'm not gonna be able to make it to their panel. But then when I learned what happened, I was like I'm okay, glad I think I'm actually I glad I couldn't get off duty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it is it is uh, it's one thing or another with uh, some cosplayers because some cosplayers are going to take it to the business level and some yeah. cosplayers go to the fun factor. And, and yes, yeah. you can still have fun and make a business out of it. But the thing is, if you're trying to make a business and somebody's trying to, like, take, your customers away from you or something it can be cause a lot of strife you know and so yeah and a lot of a lot of the oh look at her dress it's horrible Blech. and you know like why why you gotta be like evil like that just say she yeah, looks nice. rude <laughs> just be be nice you know and uh, exactly unfortunately that's our just our society is how we like to judge people yeah. and, and so Hopefully that, you know, you know, it's, it is what it is. You know, people are going to judge. People are going to yeah. complain about whatever. There's nothing we can do about this. But, of course, the whole body positivity, it doesn't matter what size you are. You can be a cosplayer is mm -hmm. a true factor. You know, it doesn't matter what, you know, um, if you want to make the fat version of Elsa, then do it. Do it. Who cares? Go make a fat version. Yeah, you. Who cares? You know, everybody's gonna love your cosplay. It's like you know, as long I mean, as you're positive. Made, like, in it. Yeah, I mean, I've seen people walking around as punk sailor scouts. Yeah, there you go. Now, when you do your cosplays, do you like to be the most authentic, or do you like to put your own twist? Uh, a little of both. Mm -hmm. Because I love to go as accurate as I can, but I know I'll never be like hundred percent accurate. Okay. But sometimes I do my own twist on things. Like I have 
some things I'm doing for a little uh, series set connected back to Escape the Night, nice. and I've already done like two characters from that one, and I already have a third one that I have a possible idea with. Nice. So, what do you think is the most difficult cosplay you have ever done? Where it just it kept falling apart, and you're like, oh, or you couldn't find the material for? Well, other than Cured Chocolate, I would say probably Kyoko Kirigiri, mainly because it was like, try to find, I had the purple jacket, but it was like, okay, gotta get the tie, gotta find the wig, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm walking around in these crazy high boots. Yeah. <laughs> high heel exactly. boots. No, it's, it's sometimes it's like so difficult to find the right material. That's what I'm struggling with, with Doctor Strange is we're looking at the movie version of Doctor Strange, and he has a specific uh, type of blue mm -hmm. and specific type of other blue and specific type of red, and it's just like, uh, wow. Yeah. It is so hard. But luckily, thanks for these interviews, I've been talking to a lot of cosplayers. SAS is a material center that has bulk uh, material. So. Mm -hmm. So we we have oh, the yeah. pattern, we have the plan. It's just oh, getting that right color of the material. Now, when you don't have the the right material, do you just go with it? Uh, pretty much. I just try to find something close to it and go from there. Uh, one of my own creations. Uh, I was supposed to originally find a black version of this jumpsuit, mm -hmm. and I couldn't. So I ended up going with like this really dark navy blue. Which it turns out in the lighting, it looks pretty close to black, so, so it, works. it was actually not that noticeable. <laughs> Very nice. So, in your opinion, what makes a cosplayer a pro cosplayer? Uh, if I were to really think pro, I would say probably like those that know first who do they want to do, um, how are they going to do it, and then just a lot of practice. Yeah. And getting better at it getting better at it yeah i think a professional cosplayer in my eyes is somebody who knows how to sew armor make and wig work and knows everything about cosplay you are a professional you know like yeah like i said mainly practice is yeah. more what i say to that <laughs> yeah practice makes perfect as they always say exactly so <sighs> during the time of pandemic um are you afraid to go to photo shoots now or or do you like have your own photographer that you can work with? It's neither really. It's more they are at locations that I can't reach. Mm. So unfortunately that makes it impossible to get over there. It's not that I'm scared or I have my own photographer. It's just I can't get to the locations when they shoot them. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Yeah, all the parks are closed and everything like that. The natural parks and well, now they're opening up, but, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, the the malls are all closing, so that's not fun. Ugh. You know. It's like, oh, man. Because, I uh, know. There's, like, li what? Yeah, there's, like, a, things happening at two of the malls that I really want to try, but now with everything going on, it makes it harder to try, get that chance to try it. Yeah, exactly. You never know what's going to happen. So... What do you think is your favorite thing about cosplay? I just love expressing creativity. I love to enjoy finding characters I love, put it all together. And I'm more, I call myself the obscure cosplayer because I do more obscure things, which I know people would not recognize, but yet I'm proud of doing it because it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just showing my stuff. I'm all right with this. Nice. So, as in everything, there's always a good and there's always an evil to things. So what are the bad things about cosplay? You gotta figure out, like, what, try to get as the right kind of material, um, struggling to figure out what exactly you need, uh, how much is it gonna cost, where are you gonna go? Yeah. All the typical things and, like, putting it together. And then at the same time, I want to avoid this drama. How the heck can I do that? Because we have all these problems happening. Yeah, exactly. And all the stores are closing down or all the the other issues that, you know, they're running out of fabric. 
and you go to Joanne's now, you can't really find fabric too much, you know, because it's all being order. taken. It's all being taken for masks, you know, for masks and everything. So it's pretty much got to go to online stores. Yeah, exactly. So you know, have you ever done a ca a <laughs> cosplay panel before? Uh, not a cosplay panel, but I have done a panel, and it was more a game show kind. Nice. That I've run with a few friends, and we basically just took like five different game shows and created like a whole heroes versus villains setup. You nice. do all these different mini games in between. We make up all the prizes and just have fun doing it. So, if you could meet your all-time favorite cosplayer, who would it be, and what would you say to them? I chickened out last time, but I really would want to do Melinda <laughs> Chan. <laughs> I chickened out last time when she was here. But I wouldn't mind meeting her and X Shadow and maybe Sorceress Cassandra as well, and to like just talk to them about like how they did an awesome job. Uh, they inspired me to start in the Yu-Gi-Oh side of things. Uh, yeah. They were kind of like the starter setup to me just doing cosplay in general. When I was just looking up Yu-Gi-Oh cosplays at random, and I ran into those three. Nice, very nice. No, yeah, I remember when we were over at. Phoenix Fan Fusion and Matthew Lewis was there, uh, who played Neville Longbottom from Harry Potter. And oh my gosh, yes, I remember that year. So, but I unfortunately was meeting someone else at that time. <laughs> yeah, so what we did, you know, my daughter was so excited to just say hi to him. That's all she wanted to say, do was say hi. And of course, you say know, hi. dad, you know, I you know, okay, let's pay for the autograph let's yeah. pay for the selfie okay yeah. you know so 200 bucks later you know um here we are here we, you know we're standing in front of matthew lewis and my daughter freezes she can't even say anything i'm like uh -huh, whoa hey 200 bucks fangirl. man <laughs> say what you gotta Fan say fangirl struggles yep so <laughs> she <laughs> she went into total fangirl moment and i was like and this is my daughter. She's a big fan of you. You, you know, you're you're a great actor. You do amazing work. Um, mm -hmm. And she, she's like, you know, oh yeah, here. And so he, you're like, what's your name? And wrote, you know, a little message for her. And uh, mm -hmm. what happened was, you know, uh, so anyway. Um, okay. Yeah, go. Uh, sorry, the dog came in the door. It's okay. I've got it's the pains okay. I got a dog of living myself. with other people. <laughs> you know. That's fine. I've got a dog myself, and I'm shocked he hasn't come scratching at my door yet. Right. So, um, so there we were and meeting Matthew Lewis, and she fan girls, and he's like, oh, "Okay, here, mm -hmm. here's your autograph." And he was like, "Yeah, you know, do you want a a picture?" And she's like, uh, "Yes." <laughs> and, and so she's like. <laughs> I was like, dude, calm down, relax. He's just a normal person. Just chill. And, it's okay. And she's like, C -c -c can I give you a hug? And she's like, yeah. And he, she's hugging him. Like, her eyes in the picture is like wide-eyed. And so, yeah, those are those yeah. are the moments. Those are the moments. Uh, and, you know, talking about character interactions, it's always nice when you have those interactions with children who are coming up to you and going, oh, my God. Your cosplay, and, or or, or, like, or Spider Man, or whatever you are, and uh, yeah, that and you mentioned like uh, the one person who came up to you and recognized your cosplay. It's always a good feeling to have like that, yeah, attention, and I think that's what a lot of cosplayers like to do is get that attention factor. It's like, oh, <gasps> yes, my work is not in vain. <laughs> Somebody recognized yeah. me. I actually had that recently as well when I was dressed up as one of my versions of MatPat, and yeah. I literally was just finishing my makeup to go with the car go with being like the dark version. Yeah. I walk out and there's a random person walking to the exhibitor hall at the same time, and she immediately saw my black and white version of this. Yeah. And went MatPat, and I'm like, I've never I... had that before. Like, <laughs> wow, how did you know it was me? Yeah, no, like I've. <laughs> I've uh, I've 
went up to people i'm like oh what do you cause playing as a detective or or you know and he's like oh i'm so and so from this anime i'm like oh i don't know i don't yeah. watch anime so yeah. what do you the think same circumstance so what do you think about the same myth circum- oh so sorry go ahead sir circumstances yeah i was gonna say it was the same circumstance when i went to an anime convention but i was dressed up as kate beckett from castle <laughs> okay i literally had someone running one of their booths immediately step out from their booth and say you're dressed as beckett that is awesome can i take a picture <laughs> nice very nice yeah so you know i think um when we go to conventions and everything and we have that little you know, we have our own cosplay it's it's always a, a good feeling when we get recognized. However, do, what do you think of the whole um, scenario of to be a better cosplayer, you have to like anime? Oh, please. <laughs> Absolutely. No. Both no. Bull debunk. Uh-uh. Debunked. Yeah. No, it's not true? Uh-uh. You don't have to be a freaking... You don't have to be a freaking fan of anime to fr- dress up in cosplay. <laughs> yeah. Um, people yeah, who was, just do it for fun. Yeah, it's fun. Because uh, the funny thing is that somebody once told me, if you do watch anime, it helps you get more ideas for characters. Okay, that I can understand. I'm trying to find ideas for watching some anime. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I figured it out. Kirito and Todoroki is I started watching My Hero yeah. Academia and Sword Art Online. And I'm like, okay, yeah. these are two anime characters. Cool. Because I was going to go to Sabaton Con my first year and I'm like, okay, what cosplay should I do? And it was Kirito. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, the great thing about cosplay is you always have an opportunity to learn something new. So what what's the next thing that you're learning? Well, I guess for one thing, uh, try basically if you just want to like re- know that if you're in a masquerade, competition is tight. Uh, if you really want to run other kinds of panels, then really plan out the kind of thing that someone would love to do. And I know for one thing, I was like, oh, I want to bring this one thing back, but I don't know how I would bring it back. Yeah. So do you prefer to cosplay as characters with props or no props? Without, because it saves a lot of carry time. I already have to carry a freaking purse around with all of my essentials in it. So adding a prop on top of that, not easy to work with. Yeah, it's always hard. I mean, I... No pockets in a lot of cosplays. That too. <laughs> that too. I mean, I already have to wear a purse over my one shoulder. And then... Mm-hmm. At the same time, carrying that with a prop, not very mm-hmm. pretty. <laughs> yeah, that's why a lot of people like to carry, uh, like to bring their handlers with them. They're the ones yeah. carrying the backpack. They're the ones that are carrying the the equipment. Yeah, I don't have, I don't have one, so it's just up to me to either bring one or don't bring one. I agree. The good thing is, in my situation, my daughter is my photographer, so she's also my handler. <laughs> Hey, you got so, double, double results. Ooh. Yep, double results on that one. Yep. So, you know, in in the world of cosplay, there there are many different avenues that you can go to. Um, do you have you heard that the more skin you show, the better uh, attention you're going to get? I have never heard that. And that kind of concerns me at the same time, because I feel like if you're showing more skin, it also would attract more unwanted attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it makes it impossible to really dress up as someone with like revealing skin <laughs> on the outfit. Exactly. Yeah, because you know, unfortunately, in the world of cosplay, there's a huge sexualization of cosplay. Um, where it's just because you're dressed as Jessica Rabbit doesn't mean that you're going to sleep with the whole convention, you know? Yeah, and I, and I always look it out like there's a character in an anime I haven't even seen yet, Gurren Lagann, and okay. there's literally a char- 
the one girl character who wears like hardly anything. So a lot of skin is revealed. So yeah. it's like, uh, I hope you're okay with that kind of thing. Yeah, well, you know, it depends on how conservative you are with your your yeah. body. And uh, some people say, hey, I've got it. I'm going to flaunt it. And I, hey, kudos to I'm those people. Yeah. You know, hey, if you can do it, do it. You know, um, but you, yeah. you mentioned, you know, the, the amount of unwanted attention that you're going to get, you know. Oh, yeah, that's always the problem. Like, sure, go ahead. Flaunt yourself if you want to reveal your skin. But at the same time, there's all this unwanted attention that comes in as well. Yeah, exactly. At the same time. And, it, and it's sad that people have to sexualize cosplay. However, that's our society today. So have you ever lost a piece of uh, your cosplay at a con? You mentioned you uh, lost a couple pieces. I've, I've never actually lost a piece oh. until I shot, which was a good thing. Uh, but I... When I was dressed up as Diaf the one year, um, I had not only a sword in my hand, but I had a secret dagger in my back, in the back. And unfortunately, I lost it when, during the evacuation, so I ha still have no idea where it is. So I had Darn. to do the, I had to do the masquerade without the secret dagger in the back because the character's a rogue. Okay. So the whole the hidden item was supposed to be like I sneak it out and be all, boom. Yep. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> No, yeah, it's true. And and that level of acting comes in to the picture when you do masquerades and everything. So hopefully, oh, yeah. hopefully soon that you'll be in a masquerade and you'll win, you know, a prize. Well, we'll we'll see on that. I'm kind of wanting to step away from that area so I can really figure out a real, a good one to come back into the competition with. Nice. Maybe when you you perfect your sewing and your armor making, maybe you know, and you'll come back with something big. Yeah, probably. Yeah. It's, a, it's always a good thing because, you know, it's always the process of the cosplay. Mm -hmm. You know, the process. The the blood, sweat, and tears that go into every cosplay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I, I say that because there's legit blood, sweat, and tears that go, yes, exactly. go into every single cosplay. Um. A lot of people feel that uh, cosplay is, um, you know, back ten years ago, cosplay was you were the outcast, you were you were the nerd yeah. geek. Nowadays, cosplay I'm proud. is I'm a normal proud nerd. Thing. Yeah, you. I'm proud nerd. I'm when you go to a cos uh, uh, convention, everybody's dressed up. You know, everybody's dressed up. Everyone's having a fun time. Yeah. And uh, even when people aren't dressed up, they're like, oh, my God, your, your outfit's amazing. Or, oh, my gosh, you're so-and-so. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's why uh, with the conventions being shut down, it's, the, the, it's that attention that cosplayers aren't getting so much. And so it's just like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? And so yeah. they're... They're kind of forced to go, okay, now I get to branch out my social media a little bit more. Now I get to post that pictures is... more often. Maybe I'll be able to do whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, with my idea, with cons for next year, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be taking cosplay interviews on the road, you know? And so... Hey, it's, it's gonna be hey, perfect. it's gonna be interesting. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're back to normal in January with uh, Taiyukan. Yeah, I'm yeah I'm literally on an app with a lot of the staff of Taiyukan because I'm I may volunteer again since it saves money of getting a badge and stuff. Yeah, exactly, and I'm I'm actually volunteering myself as well. So it, nice. you know, it'll be very fun to help out uh, a convention because I've never done that before. So, have you ever bought a cosplay piece at a con? Yes, um, a couple of times. There, going back onto the DF mm -hmm. trail, um, yep. there was a, a Renaissance medieval booth that was at Fan Fusion one time. Nice. And I was missing this particular pouch that I needed for the outfit, and I got lucky in finding a pouch that actually worked there. 
Yeah. And I just went with that, like, this is perfect. I can use this. And yeah. to go with Helios to, like, get a better idea of when I was um, Pegasus mm-hmm. from Sailor Moon, um, I actually bought a Chibi Moon plushie that I would pretty much just walk around with since Helios is pretty much her guardian. Yeah. So it's Very happened, nice. like, a couple of times, but not too often. Okay. So... When you cosplay as uh, different characters, have you ever done character makeup? Yes, I've done that a few times. Um, And there's been a couple of times where literally um, I've gotten the reaction of, OMG, I don't know what you're dressed as, but your makeup is freaking awesome. (laughs) Yeah. So have you ever uh, wanted to dive into the whole body painting thing where your, your whole body's painted? No, like Starfire no, I'm not that kind of or person. Starfire no, or the evil kind. witch. No, from... <laughs> no, I'm not that kind of. Person. I was like, I could. If anything, I could not imagine having paint on me the whole day. Yeah, you know. no, not pretty. Ooh. I I would not be able. I would not be able to survive like that. Yeah, if I just stick with my, with as much as my face and my hands. I I think I think uh I think that. A lot of uh, cosplayers in Arizona have to have somebody with a paintbrush behind them to <laughs> to patch because there's like sweat yeah, everywhere. The heat, yeah. The heat. Today we're sitting at 116 degrees. You know that is that's insane. So that's why I'm, I'm glad to be inside. I'm glad to have air conditioning. I am no so problem. glad I'm inside. Yes. Uh, and so, can you imagine having a uh, a Con- convention now right now today whoo it it'd be uh, a scorcher for sure so um yeah i'd probably walk around with an umbrella even yeah it's just like yeah. so um in in your quest for you know cosplaying and everything what's the next step for you like what are you going to learn well, since I started looking into an anime called Symfo, uh, Symfo Gear, and it was a game that I was playing on my phone for a bit, but then I realized, wait, that's an anime? What? Um, mm. That's pretty much the where I'm going to start in seeing if maybe I could work on some basic armor in that kind of area. And, like, there's some area, there's a couple of characters I want to, I have, like, makeup inspirations for, and I really got to figure out um, how am I going to pull off that makeup exactly. Yeah. As oh, well. yeah. There was one tutorial that I saw with Todoroki's makeup, and how, like, the whole face was, like, burnt, and then the whole other know, face was he... frosted. And you're oh, like, gosh, yes. wow. <laughs> Being the fire, both fire and ice, yes. Yeah, I mean, that is, like, amazing. Because, yeah, of course, you could do the Todoroki where the, it just has the burn mark on the eye. But this person took it to yeah. a new level and made the whole face on fire, the whole face on ice. I was like, wow. Yeah. It, it's just, it's the creativity that's involved. It's, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. You know. So, when the pandemic comes back hopefully uh, or when the pandemic you know is over hopefully soon um then we'll be able to get back into conventions and so you're mm-hmm. you're planning on helping out with the conventions again uh Tayocon, that is a yes i'm hoping to probably do that again uh same thing goes for fan fusion they were actually look- <clears throat> looking to hire a few people as well and right. you actually would be paid to do it Oh, wow. And so I have, I still have um, one of the people in charge, uh, their email. And I just nice. said, sure, reach out to me when it's close to convention time because I still want to help you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the good thing, like, like you said, now cosplayers have a chance to like make their cosplay better, make their cosplay, you know, a lot. Do something know. totally new. Yeah, exactly. You know, work on a new cosplay and, uh, that that's the good thing about it. Now, have you ever yeah. um have you ever had a chance to um how do I want to say this? Have you ever had a chance to get um your 
your cosplay to work after it failing a hundred times, like where you're working on a cosplay and it's just falling apart, falling apart, falling apart. And finally you did one thing and it just went, okay, perfect. Eclipse Aquarius. I've had yeah. that. Literally. I did like all this like special glue and stuff first that I thought would work. And then by the day, the next day, before I even could put it on, everything was falling off. And then when I was trying again, it still mm -hmm. wasn't working. And so I just went, okay, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to have to pull out the hot glue gun. And then freaking put the hot glue gun to work. And I was able to make it hold yeah. decently. Yeah, a lot of cosplayers in Arizona want to avoid hot glue because of the heat factor around here. I know. Yeah. it's uh. So, like, have you ever worked with on the alternative to hot glue? Uh, I do. I lately use a fabric adhesive. Um, there's a time, there's a time limit to it. So after I do put it on, um, it says I have to wait like four hours for it to dry before it's okay. Yeah. So I've been working with fabric adhesive. Uh, if I need to do something quick, I'm throwing on a ton of Velcro. Velcro. And That's always nice. I've also, yeah. And I've also used super glue a little bit. Yep, super glue doesn't one, have I'm gonna have to get a new. You're gonna have to get a new what? A new bottle of it because I'm pretty close to running out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, with uh, with everything that is cosplay in the pandemic, um, what are your go-to things when creating your cosplay? Because you know you can't really do photo shoots because the locations you want to go Not to really. are closed. So, you know, like, are you just working on perfecting your cosplays right now? If anything, when I get the chance, yes. I will be working on more, like, new and perfection. I know the big one is I have to keep my promise and create Toko since everyone wants Toko. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I got to hold, hold them to this and make up Toko. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you have to have that detail and that that drive to it yeah again you know thank you for your time and you know thank you for having an interview in, with me on this um is there anything that you yeah. would like to say to your your followers that may listen to this or listen to the broadcast or anything? well if anything um if anyone did watch then um hi if you're my friend hi i'm i'm glad you decided to stop by uh, if you're someone who's never met me before, then I basically just say, hey, if you want to do any kind of cosplay, um, start easy. Don't overwork yourself and, like, build yourself up from there. Uh, and if I, and because of the certain theme I'm dressed, I'll just say, like, yes, I am the one who cosplays from this particular show. <laughs> yeah. So it's a few I would say a few different things there. Yeah, and, of course, in the YouTube video that, um, that we'll put – you know, on YouTube, we'll have all your social links and everything. And so if they want to follow you, they can follow you wherever you are on Instagram and everything. Like yeah, that. my pre yeah, the yeah, they probably will have to stick to my Instagram because that's the one I uh, post cosplay related things to um, very often. I don't let my Facebook out to anyone except that they're like they're friends or family. And I don't use Twitter often. So yeah. if anything, no, go Twitter, to my Instagram. Twitter is hard to use. <laughs> You know, I, I don't understand how people become like, you know, really into that whole Twitter stuff. But for me, it's always, you know, Instagram for cosplayers and, you know, that's it, you know, and that's where, you, you know, a lot of people get the attention and everything. So, you know, yeah. again, thank you for your time. I appreciate, you know, you answering Absolutely. questions and everything. And uh, yeah, so take care of yourself and have yourself a nice day. And you stay safe as yeah. well. Wear your mask, everybody. Wear the mask everywhere. Please. All right, take care.